Hi everyone. So a lot of people have been, you know, curious and interested in my ketogenic journey. And so today I'm going to provide you with an update on myself and also talk a little bit about the good and the bad of ketogenic dieting. I'm Stacy Portugal and I am a weight loss coach, a board certified uh, life coach as well. And I help over 40 women figure it out, find what is going on and why they're having so much difficulty losing weight. And those are really the people that I love to help is those that have been on the diet merry-go-round just like me. So I want to just first start with a little bit of background, especially for those of you who really don't know me or don't know my story. Um, I was on a um, diet merry-go-round. I was in this vicious cycle of fad dieting because I could never get to goal. And it seemed like I lost weight so much slower and had so much more difficulty than other people. And to this day, I don't know exactly why, but that's me. And I did finally get to goal with Weight Watchers, but the number that I set for my goal weight was really higher than I wanted it to be. It was literally the highest number in my healthy weight category. So, but I chose it because I was having so much difficulty and I loved Weight Watchers. I worked for them for many years and actually it really inspired me to educate myself because A, I realized it's not about the chips. So I um, went to life coaching school and I sat for a test and became board certified, uh, thereby the BCC after my name. Um, and I also did a certification program in nutrition with Precision Nutrition. And I really dug into the science. And as a result of that, a few years ago, I decided myself to try a ketogenic diet, realizing that for whatever the reason, this just might be the best fit for me. And, you know, it wasn't like a vanity thing, but it was a little bit of a vanity thing. But it was also, I just didn't understand it and it really frustrated me and it made me feel bad about myself. And I really wanted to get the results that I deserved. And this whole journey for me and, um, you know, being in the business of being a weight loss coach you know, that's where Shake the Sugar, that my diet program comes from. It really comes from the whole idea of ketogenic dieting being, you know, on this end of the spectrum, but overall just helping people reduce or eliminate sugar and wheat in their diet. Um, and when I say to people, you should get the results that you deserve, it's because I know how hard I've worked over the years and I want people to get the results they deserve, just like I wanted to get the results that I deserved. So long in the story, long in the short of it is I, a few years ago, I tried ketogenic diet, dieting, and I felt fantastic. I mean, I looked great, I felt great, I saw a change in my body composition, my cravings were gone, I got a million great reports from different doctors that had no idea what I was doing. All they were seeing was maybe the blood work, etc. And it was amazing. Um, uh, maybe several months ago, some bad habits started like slipping in back into my diet. And sure enough, you know, it's the wolf in sheep's clothing, as I like to call these habits. You know, habits, old habits, they're very comforting. And many times it's a story that we tell ourselves. Yeah, I can have, you know, a dessert every day. I mean, why can't I? I'm like everyone else. And the truth is, it's a bad habit for me um, to be eating some of these desserts that I started indulging in again. Um, started picking again at the bread basket. You know, all these little habits that add up to a higher weight. And sure enough, I put on like five pounds. And my daughter is getting married in three months. So I had to really sit down with myself and enlist my own support, my own life coach, and make sure that I had the accountability and the support that I needed to get back to ketogenic diet and to really start being a little bit more real with myself. 
So all of this has really, um, you know, accumulated into the fact that I know that for whatever the reason, I am super carbohydrate sensitive. You know, I could have a little bit of sweets every single day and I will gain weight. Um, there are certain things that I can do and I'm okay with. And that's really where my having some support to have the patience, the confidence, and the support that I need to kind of try things and see how it affects my body. But some of us just really need to go a little further down on the spectrum of, you know, really, really, really watching those carbohydrates, those sweets, you know, the bakery type items. And listen, ketogenic dieting is not for everybody. Um, a lot of people are very into paleo and paleo is great. As I talked about in my last video, I believe in paleo eating as a lifestyle, but honestly, as a way to lose weight, it's probably more of a stepping stone for most people. Many of us f who are, you know, carb sensitive or those with who have been diagnosed with prediabetes or diabetes um, or for a variety of reasons like maybe you're just in middle age and you're female so your hormones are out of whack but for a lot of people paleo is really just not the whole story so um, it's just more of a health solution more than a weight loss solution. So I want to kind of get into the good and the bad of, of paleo, I'm sorry, of keto. But first I want to start with the fact that there is nothing bad about ketogenic dieting. I literally cannot tell you one bad thing. But there are a few things that some might consider bad and it might scare people if they don't have the proper support. So the first thing is that it is for sure a lifestyle adjustment. We live in a world that is pretty toxic in terms of diet. The standard American diet with all the bakery goods, the pizza, the fast food, the processed foods, it's tough. And there are many times that I'm in a situation that I have to say no to food that not only is super tempting, but it might make me feel like I'm not part of the group. And that's where building my skills and having the understanding of and a very clear vision of what my goals are really helps. And the support, of, co of course, really helps. So it is a really huge lifestyle adjustment. And if you want to do ketogenic dieting, you're really talking as your main carbohydrate source is vegetables. So some people really hate vegetables. And I'm lucky because I do like them. But for some, it also might become an acquired taste. Um, another thing that might phase some people a little bit about ketogenic dieting is the fact that they might feel the keto flu when they first begin. So it takes your body about two weeks to sort of switch that metabolism from glucose burning to fat burning. And in the meantime, what you might notice is that you're in the bathroom quite a bit. You know, you have to like pee more than you ever have. And that's really because you have to think of like carbohydrates as little like sponges. And these little glycogen sponges sort of get squeezed out as your body's store of carbohydrates gets depleted. And so you go to the bathroom a lot. So because of that, you may get what they call the keto flu. Again, there are remedies for this. So that's where support comes in very handy. Um, and the keto flu is pretty easily dealt with. But I think that might scare some people. Like, ooh, what if I feel a little lightheaded? Or what if, um, you know, I don't have the energy to go for my five mile run? Or what if I don't have energy, period? Or what if I feel a little moody? So once you handle um, making sure that your electrolytes are in balance, the keto flu is not an issue. Um, and that's where I work with clients. Also, you have to get used to thinking like a nutritionist. So you have to think in terms of macronutrients. You have to understand what's a protein, what's a carbohydrate, what's a fat, I've noticed a lot of people are like, don't bother me with the science, just tell me what to eat. And that's great. But if you're doing ketogenic dieting, you have to be 
open to doing a little bit of learning because you're not always going to be with your weight loss coach and you really need to how to need to know how to make the best decisions so that you're balancing those macros um, in order to reach your goal. Um, one other thing that I would say is bad about the ketogenic diet is it's kind of unforgiving. So what I mean by that is if you have one horrible day, what's happening is you're ingesting so many more carbohydrates than your body's used to, and all those little sponges, they blow back up. So you will notice a huge weight gain. You could gain five pounds, and that is just temporary. Obviously, it's just water. You've heard with any diet, whenever you lose weight initially, it's water weight. Well, that's true of any diet because of what I just told you, but with ketogenic dieting, it's even more true. So you're initially losing a lot more water. And so because of that, once some water is put back on, all of a sudden your body is holding that fluid from too many carbohydrates. So it's unforgiving in that way. And so uh, for those with a heavier exercise schedule or for those who feel deprived, one variable you can play with is um, what I call a refeed. So it's allowing yourself um, added carbohydrates kind of on a regular basis. And then you just kind of become used to it. And this way you're getting a little bit more carbohydrate if you need it for energy or if you need it just emotionally. So two things, two variables that you can play with with ketogenic dieting. It's intermittent fasting, because the thing about intermittent fasting, besides the amazing research about the health benefits, is because you're really not hungry on a ketogenic dieting, on a ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting is very easy. Um, and the other variable you can play with is, um, like I said, it's like carb cycling, refeeding. So let's talk about the good of ketogenic dieting. The first is, if you don't like your body composition, if you have a, a higher than average um, body fat percentage, if you, you know, you have those big thighs or the big stomach, this is the diet that really will give you a change in your body composition. And here's why. Because you're not just losing water, you're not losing muscle, which you wouldn't be anyway, you're actually losing your fat stores. And that's what ketogenic dieting is. Instead of using carbohydrates for energy, it's using your body fat. And so it's actually taking fat from your body. So it's a really great diet for those who are carrying too much fat on their body and seems like no matter what they do, even though they might lose weight on the scale, they always kind of look the same. That's a really good, you know, diet for you. And the other good thing about ketogenic dieting is that there has been a ton of studies on it. I mean, more and more it's getting into the limelight of the research people. And it's, you know, it's actually, ketogenic dieting is actually used for those with epilepsy. So, um, it gives them benefits, but always you should check with your doctor if that might be you. But also there's been just a ton of other research about the health benefits. And even athletes are turning to ketogenic dieting to improve their athletic performance. So that keto flu that I spoke of earlier where you might have low energy at the beginning, totally temporary. Fat, they say, is a much cleaner fuel for your body to be running on than glucose. And it's not unnatural. We're probably running on glucose because we live in this processed food environment. Um, and of course, weight loss is like a side benefit. So a ketogenic diet, there's one other thing I want to point out. It might be good. It might be bad for you. If you want to lose weight on a ketogenic diet, you have to look at it as a lifestyle. And in that regard, it's no different than any other diet because the wolf in sheep's clothing is our bad habits. So if you say, okay, I lost 40 pounds on a keto diet, woo, I'm gonna start eating pizza and pasta and I'm not even gonna think twice about it. If you go back to that, you will put that 40 pounds right back on and 
you'll probably put more back on. So with the ketogenic diet, with any diet, if you are not willing to commit to it as a lifestyle, if you're not willing to eat a paleo centric diet, then it's not for you. So that's the good and the bad, the real deal. Um, what's your thought about paleo versus keto? What questions do you have about ketogenic dieting? What questions do you have for me about my journey? I'd be happy to answer. Go ahead and place them in the comments. And if you haven't joined my Facebook group, go ahead and search Go From Cravings to Control. And that is a very chatty um, group that can uh, might be fun for you to be a part of. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And thank you so much for all the questions and the support that I've gotten as I'm, you know, just getting back to keto. And um, I'll for sure see you in the next video. Bye.